I learn in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He is very near by this. He was not three leagues off of when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But a few of any sort, and none of the name. And I find here that Don Pedro hath bestowed much honor on a young Florentine called Claudio. He hath but borne himself beyond the promise of age doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion he hath indeed better expectation than you must expect me to tell you. He hath an uncle here in Messina will be very much glad of it. I already delivered him the letters there appeared much joy to him in him. Did he break out into tears? In great measure. Ah, uh, a kind overflow of kindness. There are no faces truer than those who are so washed. How much better is it to keep at weep at joy than to joy at weeping? I pray you, has Senior Montanto returned from the war or no? I know none of that name. Lady, there was none such in the army of any sort. What is that he that you ask for, niece? My cousin, Senior Benedict of Padua. Oh, he's returned and as pleasant as ever he was. I pray you, how many men hath he killed and eaten in the wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promise to eat all of his killing. Ah, uh, faith, niece, you tax in your Benedict too much, but it he'll be meet with you. I doubt it not. He hath done good service, lady, in these wars. You had much steve victual, and he hath helped to eat it. A very valiant trencherman. He hath an excellent stomach. And a good soldier too, lady. A good soldier to a lady, but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. It is so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing we are all mortal. Oh, you must not, sir, mistake my niece. There is a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict, Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Who is his companion now? For he hath a new sworn brother every month. Is it possible? It is very easily possible. He wears his faith, but of fashion of the hat. It ever changes with the next block. I see, lady. The gentleman is not in your books. <laughs> no, and he were, I would have burned my study. But I pray you, who is his companion? There is no young squire that will make a voyage with him to the devil. He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he had caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pounds ere he be cured. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run mad, niece. <laughs> Not till hot January. Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonardo, are you come to meet your trouble? The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. Your, uh, for trouble being gone, comfort should remain, but when you depart from me, sorrow abides and happiness takes his leave. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter? Her mother hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? Uh, Signor Benedict, no, for then were you a child. You have it full, Benedict. We may guess by this what you are, being a man. Truly the lady fathers herself. Be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable father. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all of Messina, as like him as she is. I wonder that you would still be talking, Signor Benedict. No one marks you. What, my dear lady disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she hath such meat food as to feed it to Signor Benedict? <laughs> courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat, but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your lady Chanel and shall scrape a predestined scratched face. Scratching cannot make it worse, for such a face is yours. Well, you are a rare parrot, teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer. But keep in your way, in God's name, I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, 
My dear friend Leonardo hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at least a month, and he heartily prays some occasion may detain us longer. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Uh, Don John, let me bid you welcome, my lord, being reconciled to the prince, your brother. I owe you all duty. Thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please, did your grace lead on? Your hand, Leonardo. We will go together. Let's all leave now. Benedict, didst thou note the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? <laughs> do you question me as an honest man should do for my simple, true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, in faith, methinks she too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her. That were she other than she is, she were unhandsome. And be no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am in sport. I pray thee tell me truly how thou likest her. <laughs> Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yeah, in a case to put it into. In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that, that ever I looked on. I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. There's her cousin, as she were not possessed with a fury, exceeded her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband. Have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero be my wife. <laughs> Is it come to this? Shall I never see a bachelor of three scorn again? Look, Don Pedro is returned to seek you. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy in this opinion. That fire cannot melt out of me, will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. I never could maintain his part but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, likewise give her most humble thanks. I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. My liege, your highness, now may do me good. Hath Leonardo any son, my lord? No child but hero, she's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when you went onward with this ended action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye. That liked but had a rougher task at hand than to drive liking in the name of love. But now I am returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant in their rooms, come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair a young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. If thou dost love fair hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. Was not to this end that thou began to twist so fine a story? How sweetly you do minister love, that no loves grief by his complexion. It is once thou lovest, and I will fit thee with the remedy. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero I am Claudio, and in her bosom I'll, un I'll unclasp my heart and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after to her father will I break, and the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. How oh, now, brother? Where is my cousin, your son? Hath he provided this music? He is very busy about it, but brother, I can tell you strange news that you yet dreamt not of. Are they good? 
The prince and Count Claudio, walking in a thick pleached alley in mine orchard, were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The prince discovered to Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if you found her accordant, he meant to take the present time to top and instantly break with you. But Half the fellow any wit that told you this? A good sharp fellow. I will send for him and question him yourself. No, oh, no, no. We will hold it as a dream till it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter with all that she may be better prepared for an answer, if peradventure this be true. Go you and tell her of it, okay? With a good year, my lord, why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause, and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach, and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy, and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man in his humor. You have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace where it is impossible you should take true root but by the fair weather that you make yourself. It is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a kangaroo in a hedge than a rose in his grace, and it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from many. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied, but I am a plain-dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. What news, Baraccio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? What is he for a fool that betroths himself to unquietness? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio? Even he. A proper squire. And who? And who? Which way looks he? Mary, on hero, the daughter and heir of Leonardo. A very forward march chick. How came you to this? I whipped me behind the arras, and there I heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come. Let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. Was not cut John here at supper? I saw him not. How tartly the gentleman looks. I never can see him, but I am heartburned an hour after. He's a very melancholy disposition. You were an excellent man that were made just midway between him and Signor Benedict. Then half Signor Benedict's tongue in Count John's mouth, and half Count John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. <laughs> With a good leg and a good foot, uncle, and money enough in his purse. Such a man would win any woman in the world if he could get her goodwill. By my troth, niece, thou wilt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. In faith, she's too cursed. Lord, I cannot endure a husband with a beard on his face. I would rather lie in the woolen. You may light on a husband that hath no beard. And what should I do with him? Dress him in a, my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? He, hath, he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that has no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me. And he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Oh, well then, go you into hell. No, but to the gate. There will the devil meet me like an old cuckold with horns on his head and say, Go you to heaven, Beatrice. Get you to heaven. There is no place for you, mates. And away to St. Peter. For the heavens he show me where the bachelors sit. And there I will live as merry as the days are long. Well, niece, I trust you'll be ruled by your father. Yes, faith. It is my cousin's duty to make a curtsy and say, Father, as it pleases you. But yet... For all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it pleases me. Uh, Beatrice, get the dogs away from our dinner table, please. Niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. Not till God make men from another metal than earth. 
No, uncle, I'm not. Hero, daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. The fault may be in music, cousin. If you not be wooed in good time, if the prince be too important, tell him that there is measure in everything. And so dance out the answer. For hear me, hero, the wooing, the wedding, and repenting is such of the Scottish jig and measure and a syncopace. Cousin, you apprehend passing shrewdly. I have a good eye, uncle. I can see church by daylight. Uh, the revelers are entering. Uh, uh, brother, make good room. Lady, will you walk about with your friend? You walk softly and sweetly and nothing. I'm yours for the walk and especially when I walk away. And when please you to say so? When I like your favor, for God, defend the loot, should be like the case. Speak low if you speak love. Well, I would you did like me. So would not I for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. <laughs> Which is one? I say my prayers aloud. I love you the better, and may, the hearers may cry amen. God match me with a good dancer. Amen. And God keep him out of my sight when this dance is done. Answer clerk. Uh, no more words. The clerk is answered. I know you well enough. You are Senor Antonio. At a word, I am not. <laughs> I know you by the waggling of your head. Tell you to, to tell you true, I counterfeit him. You could never do him so ill well unless you were the very man. Here's his dry hand up and down. You are he, you are he. At a word, I am not. Come, come, do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Can virtue hide itself? Go to, mum. you are he. Graces will appear and there's an end. Will you not tell me who told you so? No, you shan't pardon me. <laughs> Nor will you not tell me who you are. Not now. That I was disdainful, and that I had my good wit of the hundred merry tales. Well, this was Senior Benedict that said so. What's he? I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Didn't he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. His only gift is to divide his thing impossible slanders. None but the libertines delight in him. <laughs> and the accommodation is not his wit, but in his villainy. For he is both pleases men and angers them. And then they laugh at him and beat him. For I am sure that he is in the fleet. I would he had boarded me. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Do, do. We must follow the leaders. In every good thing. <laughs> Nay, if they lead to any good will, I will leave them at the next turning. Sure, my brother is amorous on Hero, and has withdrawn her with her father to break with him about it. The ladies follow her, and but one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Are not you, Signor Benedict? You know me well, I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. He is enamored on Hero. I pray you dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. So did I too, and he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let us to the banquet. Thus answer I in the name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so, the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all things, save in the office and affairs of love. This is an accident of hourly proof, which I mistrusted not. Farewell, therefore, hero. Count Claudio. Yea, the same. <laughs> Come, will you go with me? Whither? <laughs> About your own business, County. For, for the prince has got your hero. I wish him joy of her. <laughs> but did you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you, leave me. <laughs> Alas, the poor will he the sieges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me, and not know me. The prince is fool. I am not so reputed. It is the base, though bitter, disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into the, her persons, and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Now, senor, where's the count? Did you see him? Troth, my lord. I found his melancholy as a lodge in a warren. 
I told him, and I think I told him true, that your graces has gotten the goodwill of this young lady. The Lady Beatrice hath a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. She told me, I, not thinking, I have been myself that I was the prince's jester. It was duller than the great thought. Huddling just upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man at a mark with the whole army shooting at me. He speaks, she speaks poniards and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. Look, here she comes. Will your graces commend me of any service? To the world's end, I will go to the slightest errand, on the slightest errand now, that you will, can devise to send me on. I will fetch you a toothpicker from the furthest inch of India. Fetch you a hair off the great Cham's beard. Do you have any embassy other than hold three words with this harpy? You have no employment for me? None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady's tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord, he lent it to me for a while, and I gave him use for it, a double heart for his single one. Mary, once before he won it of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I lost it. You have put him down, lady, you have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord. Lest I prove the mother of fools, I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Why, how now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. How then, sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well. But the civil Count, as civil as an orange, is nothing of a jealous complexion. Aye, in faith, lady, I think your blazon to be true. Though I'll be sworn, if he be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his goodwill obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count, take of me one my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say, Amen. To it. Speak now, Count. It is your cue. Silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let him not speak either. In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, lord, I thank it. Poor fool, it keeps on the windy side of care. My cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. Good lord for alliance. Thus goes everyone to the world but I. And I am sunburnt. I may sit in the corner and cry, hey ho, for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. I would rather one of your father's getting. Hath your grace now a brother like you? Your father had got excellent husbands, if a maid could come by them. Will you have me, lady? No, my lord, unless I may another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me, and to be merry best becomes you. For out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, my lord, my mother cried, but then there was a star danced, and under that I was born. Cousins, God give me joy. By my troth, a pleasant-spirited lady. There is a little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never sad, but when she sleeps, I'm not even ever sad then, for I have heard my daughter say she hath often dreamt of unhappiness and waked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She mocks all her wooers out of suit. You were an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, Lord, my Lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. County Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Tomorrow, my Lord, time goes on crutches till love have all his rights. Oh, not till Monday, my dear son, which is hence to just a, a, a seven night and a time too brief, too, to have all things answer my mind. Claudio, the time shall not go dully by us. I will in the interim undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection, the one with the other. If you three will but minister such assistance as I shall give you direction. My lord, I am for you, though it cost me ten nights' watchings. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero? 
I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good husband. If we can do this, he will be no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yay, my lord, but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be medicinable to me. I am sick in displeasure to him, and whatsoever comes athwart his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favor of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to hero. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out at her lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince your brother. Spare not to tell him that he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio to a contaminated stale, such a one as hero. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, and kill Leonardo. Look you for any other issue? Only to despite them, I will endeavor anything. Go then, find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. Offer them instances which shall bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret Hero. Hear Margaret term me Claudio, and bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. For in the meantime, I will so fashion that the matter hero shall be absent. There shall appear such seeming truth of hero's disloyalty that jealousy shall be called assurance, and all the preparation overthrown. Grow this to what adverse issue it can. I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Be you constant in the accusation, and my cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn their day of marriage. Boy! Senor! In my chamber window lies a book. Bring it hither to me in the orchard. I am here already. I know that, but I would have thee hence and here again. I do much wonder that one man becomes the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. I have known when, when there was no music with him, but the drum and the fife. Now had he rather hear the tabber and the pipe. I have known when he would have walked ten miles of filmer, and now will he lie ten nights awake, carving the fashion of a new doublet. He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. And now he has turned orthography. His words are a very fantastical banquet, just so many strange dishes. May I be so converted to see with these eyes. I cannot tell, I think not. I will be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet I am well. But still all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Fair, or I'll never look on her. Mild, or come not near me. Of good discourse, an excellent musician. And her hair shall be of what color it please. God hail the prince and Monsieur Love, I will hide me in the arbor. Um, shall we hear this music? Yea, my good lord, how still the evening is, as hushed on purpose to grace harmony. See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord. We'll hear that song again. <laughs> oh, good, my lord, tack not so bad a voice, uh, to slander music any more than once. <laughs> It is the witness still of excellency to put a strange face on his own perfection. I pray thee, sing, and let me woo no more. <laughs> now, divine heir, now is his soul ravaged. Is it not strange? Sheep's gut should hail so souls out of men's bodies? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, 
Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. One foot in sea and one on shore. To one thing constant never. Sing no more ditties, sing no more of dumps so dull and heavy since summer first was heavy. Thank you. By my troth, a good song. Thank you. And an ill singer, though, my lord. Ha, huh. no, no, Faith, thou singest well enough for a shift. <laughs> Thank you. Any better dog that should have howled thus, they would have hanged him. I pray thee get us some excellent music, for tomorrow night we would have it at the Lady Hero's chamber window. Oh, yeah, uh, the best I can, my lord. <laughs> Do so, farewell. What was it you told me of today? That your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, I stock on, stock on, the foul sits. I did never think the lady would have loved any man. No, nor I either, but most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviors seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith like enough. Oh, God, counterfeit? There was never counterfeit of passion came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why? What effects of passion shows she? Hit the hook well, this fish will bite. Oh, what effects, my lord? You heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. How? How, I pray you? You amaze me. I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. I should think this is gall, but that the white-bearded fellow speaks it. Hath she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. Tis true indeed. So your daughter says, shall I, says she, to have so oft encountered him with scorn, write to him that I love him? Ah, this says she now when she is beginning to write to him, for she'll be up twenty times a night, and there will she sit in her smock till she have written a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. <laughs> she doth indeed. My daughter says so. My daughter is sometimes afeard. She will do a desperate outrage to herself. It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she will not discover it. To what end? He would make but a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should. It were an alms to hang him. She is an excellent sweet lady, and out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything but in loving Benedict. Oh, I am sorry for her, as I leave just cause, being her uncle and her guardian. I pray you tell Benedict of it, and hear what he will say. Uh, were it good? Thank you. Hero thinks surely she will die, for she says she will die if he love her not, and she will die ere she make her love known, and she will die if he woo her. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it, for the man hath a contemptible spirit. He is a very proper man. He hath indeed a good outward happiness. Before God and in my mind, very wise. He doth indeed show some sparks that are like wit. And I take him to be valiant. Well, I am sorry for your niece. Shall we go see Benedict and tell him of her love? Never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. Nay, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out first. I love Benedict well, and I could wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much she is unworthy so good a lady. Uh, my lord, will you walk? Dinner is uh, ready. If you do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. Let there be the same net spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewoman carry. Let us send her to call him to dinner. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. Love me? Why, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly. If I perceive the love come from her, they say, too, that 
she would rather die than give me any sign of affection. I must not seem proud. Happy are they, they hear their distractions, and can put them to meddling. They say the lady is fair, tis a true. I can bear them witness virtue, virtue tis so, I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me, by my troth there is no, no addition to her wit, nor no good great statement of her folly. For I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance to have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me, because I have railed so long against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. Shall quips and senses of these paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humor? No! The world must be peopled. When I say I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live until I were married. Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she is a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come to dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure then in the message? Yea, so much as you take upon a knife's point. You have no stomach, senor. Fare you well. Ha! I am sent to bid you to dinner. There's a double meaning in that. Good Margaret, run me to the parlor. There shalt thou find my cousin Beatrice proposing with the prince in Cotto. Whisper her ear and tell her I and Ursula walk in the orchid, and her whole discourse is of her. Say that thou still overheard us and bid her steal into the bower where honey cycles ripen. There will she find her. I'll make her come. I warrant you presently. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace the sally up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than ever man to merit. My talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Of this matter is little Cupid's crafty arrow made, that only wounds by here today. Now begin, for look for Beatrice runs close by the grounds to hear our conference. The pleasant's angling to see the fish, cut with her golden oars, the silver stream, and greedily devoured the treacherous bait. So angle we for Beatrice, who even now is couched in the wooden coverture. Fear you not my part of the dialogue. No, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggers of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my newly trothed lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to inquire her of it, but I persuaded them, if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection and never to let Beatrice know of it. And why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full as fortunate a bed as I as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? O oh God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. The stain and scored red sparkling in her eyes, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter all seems weak. She cannot love. Sure, I think so, and therefore certainly it were not good she knew of his love, lest she'll make sport of it. Why, you speak truth. I never yet saw a man. How wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured, but she would spell him backward. So turns she every man the wrong side out. She never gives to truth and virtue that which simpleness and merit would chaseth. Sure, sure. Such carping is not commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I were to speak, she would mock me into air. Yet tell her of it. Hear what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man of Italy, always accepted, my dear Claudio. When are you married, madam? Why, every day, tomorrow. Come, go in. She's lined, I warrant you. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, the loving goes by halves. Some keep it kill with arrows, some with traps. What fire in mine ears? Can this be true? I stand condemned for pride and scorn so much. Contempt, farewell, and ma maiden pride adieu. No glory lives behind the backs of such. And Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thine loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. 
for others say thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reportingly. Galleons, I am not as I have been. So say I, methinks you are sadder. I hope he be in love. There is no appearance of fancy in him, unless it be a fancy that he hath to strange disguises. Indeed, he looks younger than he did by the loss of a beard. That's as much as to say, the sweet youth's in love. The greatest note of it is in his melancholy. Indeed, that tells a heavy tale for him. Conclude, 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 he is in love. Nay, but I know who loves him. That would I know too, I warrant, one that knows him not. Yes, and in his ill conditions, and in despite of all, dies for him. Old senor, walk aside with me. I have studied eight or nine wise words to speak to you, which these hobby horses must not hear. My lord and brother, God save you. Good evening, brother. If your leisure is served, I would speak with you. Private. If it please you, yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that, when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not, but let that appear hereafter, and am better at me by that I now will manifest. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, and circumstances shortened. The lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she. Leonardo's hero. Your hero. Every man's hero. Disloyal? Go but with me tonight. You shall see her chamber window entered even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. But it would better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If you will follow me, I will show you enough. And when you have seen more and heard more, proceed accordingly. If I see anything tonight, why I should not marry her, tomorrow in the congregation where I should wed, there will I shame her. And as I wooed for thee to obtain her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. I will disparage her no farther till you are my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. Are you good men and true? Yea, or else it would be a pity, but they should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them if they should have any allegiance in them being chosen for the prince's watch. We'll give them their charge, neighbor Dogberry. First, who think you the most desartless man to be constable? You, O Cake, sir, or George Seacole, for they can write and read. Come hither, neighbor Seacole. God hath blessed you with a good name. To be a well-favored man is the gift of fortune, but to read and write comes by nature. Both which, Master Constable? You have. I knew it would be your answer. You are thought here to be the most senseless and fit man to be constable of the watch. Therefore, bear you the lantern. This is your charge. You should comprehend all vagrom men you are to bid any man stand in the prince's name. How if he will not stand? Why then, take no note of him, but let him go. If he will not stand when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True, and they are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets. We will rather sleep than talk. We know it belongs to a watch. Why, you speak like an ancient and most quiet watchman. For I cannot see how sleeping should offend. Only have care that your bills be not stolen. Well, you are to call at all the alehouses and bid those that are drunk get them to bed. And how if they will not? Why then, let them alone until they are sober. Well, sir. If you meet a thief, you may suspect him by virtue of your office to be no true man. And for such kind of men, the less you meddle or make with them, why, the more is for your honesty. If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? The most peaceable way for you, if you do take a thief, is to let him show himself what he is and steal out of your company. You have always been called a merciful man, partner. Truly, I would not hang a dog by my will, much more a man who has any honesty in him. If you hear a child cry in the night, you must call the nurse and...
What, Conrad? A peace. Stir not. Conrad, I say. Here, man, I'm at thy elbow. Mass, and my elbow itched. I thought there would a scab follow. I will owe thee an answer for that, and I'll forward with thy tail. Stand thee close, then, under this penthouse, for it drizzles rain. And I will, like a true drunkard, utter all to thee. There's some treason, masters, yet stand close. Therefore I know, I've earned of Don John a thousand ducats. Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Thou shouldst rather ask if it were possible any villainy should be so rich. For when rich villains need proof of poor ones, poor ones may make of what price they will. I wonder at it. Tush, I may as well say the fool's the fool. But seest thou what a deformed thief this fashion is? I know that deformed. He has been a vile thief this seven year. He goes up and down like a gentleman. I remember his name. Didst thou not hear somebody? No, twas the vein on the house. Seest thou not, I say, what a deformed th thief this fashion is, how giddily he turns about all the hot bloods between fourteen and five and thirty. But art not thou thyself giddy with the fashion too, that thou hast shifted out of thy tale into telling me of the fashion? Not so, neither. But know that I have tonight with Margaret, the lady hero's gentlewoman, by the name of Hero. She leans me out at her mistress's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. I tell this tale vilely. I should first tell thee how the prince, Claudio, and my master, planted and placed and possessed by my master, Don John, saw far off in the orchard this amiable, amiable encounter. And thought thy Margaret was hero? Two of them did, the prince and Claudio. How the devil my master knew she was Margaret, and partly by his oaths, which first possessed them, partly by the dark night, which did deceive them, but chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander against Don John had made. Away went Claudio, enraged. He swore he would meet her as he appointed next morning at the temple, and there, before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw o'er a night, and send her home again without a husband. We charge you in the prince's name, stand. Call up the right master constable. Uh, 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 we have here recovered the most dangerous piece of fletchery that it was ever known in the Commonwealth. And one deformed was one of them. I know him. He wears a lock. Masters, masters. You'll be made bring deformed forth, I warrant you. Masters, never speak, we charge you. Let us obey you to go with us. We are like, we are like to prove a goodly commodity being taken up of these men's bills. Mm -hmm. A commodity in question, I warrant you. Come, we'll obey you. Good Ursula, wake my cousin Beatrice and desire her to rise. I will, lady. And bid her come hither. Well. Roth, I think your other rebata were about her. No, pray thee, good Meg, I'll wear this. By my troths, not so good, and I warrant you, your cousins will say so. My cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. I like the new tire within excellently. If the hair were a thought browner, and your gown's a most rare fashion, I faith. I saw the Duchess of Milan's gown. Oh, that exceeds, they say. By my troths, but a nightgown, in respect of yours, cloth of gold and cuts, and lace with silver, set with pearls, down sleeves, side sleeves, and skirts round underborn, with a bluish tinsel. God give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceeding heavy. Twill soon be heavier by the way of a man. Fie upon thee, art not ashamed. Of what, lady, speaking honorably? Is not marriage honorable and beggar? Is not your lord honorable without marriage? Ask my lady Beatrice else. Here she come. Carl cut. Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now do you speak in the sick tune? I am out of all other tunes, methinks. Claps into light, O oh love, without a burden. Do you sing and I'll dance? You light, O oh love, with your heels. Then, if your husband have stable enough, you'll see he lacks no barns. Oh, legitimate construction, I scorned that with my heels. Tis almost five o'clock, cousin. Tis time you were ready. By my truth, I am exceedingly ill. For a hawk, a horse, or a husband? For the letter that begins with them all, H. Well, and you be not turned, Turk. There's no more sailing by the star. What means the foul, Tro? Nothing, I, but God send everyone their heart's desire. These gloves account to me. They are an excellent perfume. I'm stuffed, cousin. I cannot smell. 
A maiden stuffed, there's a goodly catching of cold. Oh, God help me. God help me. God help me. How long have you professed apprehension? Ever since you left it, doth not my whip become me rarely? It is not seen enough. You should wear it in your cap. Lady, I am not such a fool to think what I list, nor I list not to think what I can, nor indeed I cannot think. If what could I think my heart out of thinking that you are in love, or that you will be in love, that you can be in love? Yet Benedict was such another, and now he has become a man. He swore he would never marry, and yet now... And despite of his heart, he eats his m meat without grudging. And how you may be converted, I know not. But me thinks you will look your eyes as other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? It's not a false gallop. Madam, withdraw. The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. Help to dress me, good cuz, good Meg, good Ursula. What would you with me, honest neighbor? Mary, sir, I would have some confidence with you that discerns you nearly. Brief, I pray you, for you see it is a busy time with me. Mary, this it is, sir. Yes, in truth, it is, sir. What is it, my good friends? Goodman Virgis speaks a little off the matter. An old man, sir, and his wits are not so blunt as, God help, I would desire they were, but, in faith, honest as the skin between his brows. Yes, I thank God I am an, as honest as any man living that is an old man and no honester than I. Comparisons are odorous, palabrous, neighbor Virgis. Uh, neighbors, you are tedious. It pleases your worship to say so, but we are the poor duke's officers. But truly, for mine own part, if I were as tedious as the king, I could find in my heart to bestow it all on your worship. All thy tediousness on me! <laughs> Yea, and toward a thousand pound more than this. For I hear a good exclamation on your worship as any man in the city, and though I be but a poor man, I am glad to hear it. And so am I. I would fain know what you have to say. Mary, sir, our watchnet, accepting your worship's presence, has taken a couple of as errant knaves as any as Messina. A good old man, sir. He will be talking. As they say, when the age is in, the wit is out. Oh. An honest soul in faith, sir, by my troth he is, as ever broke bread. But God is to be worshipped. All men are not alike. Alas, good neighbor. Indeed, neighbor, he comes too short of you. Gifts that God gives. I must leave you. <laughs> One more word, sir. Our watch, sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons, and we would believe, and we would have them this morning examined before your worship. Uh, uh, take their examination yourself and bring it me. I am now in great haste, as it may appear unto you. It shall be suffigance. Some wine ere you go. Fare you well. My lord, they say for you to give your daughter to her husband. I'll wait upon them. I am ready, for thou art slow of speech, apparently. <laughs> go, good partner, go. Get you to Francis Seacole. Bid him bring his pen and inkhorn to the jail. We are now to examination these men. And we must do it wisely. We will spare for no wit, I warrant you. Here's that shall drive some of them to a non-come. Only get the learned writer to set down her excommunication and meet me at the jail. Come, Friar Francis, be brief only to plain form of marriage and you shall recount their particular duties afterwards. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady? No. <laughs> uh, to be married to her, Friar, you come to, you come, you come to marry her. Lady, you come hither to be married to this count? I do. If either of you know any inward impediment, why you should not be conjoined, I charge you and your souls to utter it. Know you any, hero? No, my lord. Know you any, count? Uh, uh, I dare make his answer none. Stand thee by, friar. Father, by your leave, Will you, with free and unconstrained soul, give me this maid, your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. 
And what have I to give you back, whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless to render her again. Sweet prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonardo, take her back again. Oh. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold how like a maid she blushes here. Would you not swear, all you that see her, that she were a maid by, those, by these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an unapproved wanton. Dear my lord, if you, in your own proof, have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her virginity. No, Leonardo, I never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to his sister showed bashful sincerity and comely love. It seems I ever otherwise I do you. You seem to me as Diane in her orb, as chaste as in the bud ere it be blown. But you are more intemperate in your book than Venus or those pampered animals that rage in savage sensuality. Ah! Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored that have gone about to link my dear friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken or are you a, a dream? Sir, they are spoken, and these things are true. This looks not like a nuptial. True! Oh, God! Let me but move one question to your daughter. And by that fatherly and kindly power that you have in her, bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. God defend me, how am I beset? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not a hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? What man... Was he talked with you yesternight out at your window betwixt twelve and one? I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why then? Are you no maiden? Leonardo, I am sorry you must hear. Upon mine honor, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with a ruffian at her chamber window. Most like a liberal villain, confess the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. Fie, fie. They are not to be named, my lord. Not to be spoke of. There is not chastity enough in language, without offense to utter them. O oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been, if half thy outward graces had been placed about thy thoughts and counsels of thy heart. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair. Farewell, thou pure impiety and impious purity. Half no man's dagger here, a point for me! Ah! <laughs> Why, how now, cousin? Wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light. Smother her spirits up. How doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle! Hero, why hero? Uncle, Signor Benedict, friar! Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame. That may be wished for! How now, cousin hero? I've awakened. Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Why doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is printed in her blood? Do not live, hero. Do not ope thine eyes, for did I think thou wouldst not quickly die? Thought I thy spirits were stronger than thy shames? Myself would strike at thy life. Grieved, I, I had but one. Oh, one too much by thee. Why had I one? Why ever wast thou lovely in my eyes? Oh, she is fallen into a pit of ink that the whole wide sea hath drops too few to wash her clean again and salt too much, which may season give to her foul, tainted flesh. Sir, sir, be patient. For my part, I am so tired in wonder. I know not what to say. Oh, my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not. Although until last night, I have this twelve months been her bedfellow. Confirmed! Confirmed! Would the two princes lie and Claudio lie? Hence from her, let her die. Hear me a little, for I have only silent been so long and have given way unto this course of fortune by noting of the lady. I have marked a thousand blushing 
aberrations to start into her face. A thousand innocent shames and angel whiteness beat away those blushes. In her eye, there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Trust not my age, my reverence, calling, nor divinity, if this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. Oh, friar, friar, it cannot be. Thou seest that all the grace that she hath left is that she will not add to her damnation, since perjury. She not denies it. Why seekest thou then to cover with excuse that which appears in proper nakedness? Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that do accuse me. I know none. There is some strange misprision in the princess. Two of them have the very bent of honor. And if their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lives in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil in the frame of villainous. I know not. If they speak but truth to her, these hands shall tear her. If they wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Mm. Pause a while, and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the princess, left for dead, and let her a while be secretly kept in, and pu publish it that she is dead indeed. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this all carried shall on her behalf change slander to remorse. She, dying, as it must be so maintained, upon the instant that she is accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. So will it fare with Claudio, when he shall hear she died upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination and every lovely organ of her life. Shall come apparelled in more precious habit, more moving, delicate, and full of life into the eye and prospect of his soul, then she will live indeed. Then shall he mourn in which he had not so accused her. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. Ah, uh, being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day, perhaps, is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Surely, I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. Ah, uh, how much might the man deserve me that would write her? Is there any way to show, show such friendship? A very even way, but no such a friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is it not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I loved nothing as well as you, but believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing, and I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that say I love not you. Then why, God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice. You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. And do with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come bid me. Do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. Ha! Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. I am gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. Nay, I pray you, let me go. Beatrice. Is he not approved in the height of a villain? Oh, he hath slandered and scorned and dishonored my kinswoman. Oh, that I were a man. What bear her in hands until they come to take hands? And then, with public accusation, uncovered slander, and unmitigated rancor, Oh, God, if I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Talk with a man out at a window, a proper saying. Nay, but Beatrice. Sweet hero, she is wrong. She is slandered. She is undone. Be he is now valiant as Hercules, that only tells a lie and swears it. 
I cannot have man with wishing, therefore I will die in woman with grieving. Terry, good Beatrice, by this hand I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul the Count Claudio hath wronged hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead, and so farewell. Is our whole assembly appeared? Yea. Which be the malefactors? Mary, that I am, and my partner. Nay, that's certain. We have the exhibition to examine. But which are the offenders that are to be examined? Let them come before Master Constable. Yay, Mary, let them come before me. What is your name, friend? Baraccio. Pray, write down Baraccio. Yours, sirrah? I am a gentleman, sir. My name is Conrad. Write down Master Gentleman Conrad. Masters, do you serve God? Yea, sir, we hope. Masters, it is proved already that you are little, little better than false knaves, and, will, and it will go near to be thought so shortly. How answer you for thyselves, for yourselves? Mary, sir, we say we are none. A marvelous witty fellow, fellow, I assure you, but I will go about with him. Sir, I say to you, it is thought you are false knaves. Sir, I say to you, we are none. Have you written down that they are none? Master Constable, you go not the way to examine. You must call forth the watch that are their accusers. Yea, Mary, that's the eftest way. Let the watch come forth. Masters, I charge you in the prince's name, accuse these men. This man said, sir, that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Write down Prince John a villain. Well, that is flat perjury to call a prince's brother villain. Master Constable. Pray thee, fellow, peace. I do not like thy look, I promise thee. Mary, that he had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. Flat burglary that ever was committed. Yea, by mass, that it is. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean, upon his words, not uh, to disgrace her before the whole assembly and not marry her. O oh, villain, thou wilt be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. What else? Uh, this is all. And this is more, masters, than you can deny. Prince John is this morning secretly stolen away. Hero was in this very manner refused, and upon the grief of this suddenly died. Master Constable, let these men be bound and brought to Leonardo's. I will go before and show him their examination. Come, let them be opinioned. Yes. Let them be in the hands. Off, coxcomb. God's my life, where's the sexton? Let him write down the prince's officer, coxcomb. Come, bind them, thou naughty varlet. Away, you are an ass. You are an ass. Dost thou not suspect my place? Does thou not suspect my years? Oh, that you are here to write me down an ass. But masters, remember that I am an ass. Thou will not be written down yet. Forget not that I am an ass. No, thou villain, thou art full of piety and shall be proved upon thee by good witness. Bring him away. Oh, that I had been written down an ass. You're an ass. If you go on thus, you will kill yourself, and tis not wisdom thus to second grief against yourself. I pray thee, cease thy counsel, which falls into my ears as profitless as water in a sieve. Bring me a father that so loved his child, whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine, and bid him speak of patience. Therefore give me no counsel, my griefs cry louder than advertisement. Therein do men from children nothing differ. I pray thee, peace, I will be flesh and blood. For there was never yet philosopher that could endure the toothache patiently. Yet bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There thou speakest reason. Nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me hero is belied, and that shall Claudio know. So shall the prince and all of them that thus dishonor her. 
Here comes the prince and Claudio hastily. Oh, yes, here they come. Good evening, good evening. Good day to both of you. Hear you, my lords. We have some haste, Leonardo. Some you know. haste, my lord. Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could right himself with quarreling, some of us would lie low. Who wrongs him? Mary, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, thou. Nay, never, lay thy hand upon thy sword. I fear thee not. Mary, beshrew my hand, if it should give your age such cause of fear and faith. My hand meant nothing to my sword. Uh, tush, tush, man, never fleer and jest at me. I speak not like a dotard nor a fool. No, Claudio, to thy head. Thou hast so wronged mine innocent child and me that I am forced to lay my reverence by. And with my gray hairs and bruise of many days do challenge thee to a trial of a man. I say thou hast belied mine innocent child. Thy slander hath gone through and through her heart, and she lies buried with her ancestors. Oh, in a tomb where never scandal slept, save this of hers, framed by thy villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right, old man. Oh, my lord, my lord, I'll prove it on his body if he dare. Away, I will not have to do with you. Canst thou so daft me? Thou hast killed my child. If thou killst me, boy, thou shalt kill a man. He shall kill two of us, and men indeed. But that's no matter. Let him kill one first. Win me and wear me. Let him answer me. Come, follow me, boy. Come, sir boy. Come, follow me. Sir boy, I'll whip you from your foining fence. Nay, as I am a gentleman, I will. Ah, brother. Content yourself. God knows I loved my niece, and she is dead, slandered to death by villains, that dare as well answer a man indeed, as I dare take a serpent by the tongue, boys, apes, braggarts, jacks, milksops. Uh, but brother Anthony. Hold you content. <sighs> what, man? I know them. Scrambling, outfacing, fashion-monging boys that lie in cog and flout, deprave and slander, and speak mm. a half a dozen dangerous words how they might hurt their enemies if they durst, and this is all. Uh -huh. But brother Anthony. Come, tis no matter. Do not you meddle. Let me deal in this. <sighs> Gentlemen both, we will not wake your patience. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death, but on mine honor, she was charged with what was true and very full of proof. Oh, my lord, my lord. I will not hear you. Oh, no? Come, brother, away. I will be heard. And shall, or some of us will smart for it. Mm-hmm. See, see, here comes the man we went to seek. Now, senor, what news? Good day, my lord. Welcome, senor. You are almost come to part almost to fray. We had to have our two noses snapped off with two old men without teeth. Leonardo and his brother. What thinkest thou? Had we fought, I doubt we should have been too young for them. In false quarrel, there is no true valor. I came to seek you both. We've been up and down to seek thee, for we are high-proof melancholy and would fain it beaten away. Wilt thou use thy wit? It is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? Dost thou wear thy wit by thy side? Sir, I shall meet your wit in, in the career, and you charge it against me. I pray you, choose another subject. By this light he changes more and more. I think he'd be angry indeed. Shall I speak a word in your ear? God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I just not. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Well, I will meet you so I may have a good cheer. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. My lord, for your many companies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother the bastard is fled from Messina. You have among killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He is an earnest. And most profound earnest, and I'll warrant you for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee? Most sincerely. Pluck up my heart, and be sad. Did he not say my brother was fled? Come you, sir, if justice cannot tame you. She shall never weigh more reasons in her balance. How oh, now, two of my brother's men bound? Baraccio won. Hearken after their offense, my lord. Officers, what offense have these men done? Mary, sir, they have committed false report. Moreover, they have spoken untruths. Secondarily, they are slanders. Sixth and lastly, they have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, 
They are lying names. First, I ask thee what they have done. Thirdly, I ask thee what's their offense. Sixth and lastly, why they are committed, and to conclude, what you laid to their charge. Who have you offended, masters, that you are thus bound to your answer? This learned constable was too cunning to be understood. What's your offense? Sweet prince, let me go no further to mine answer. Do you hear me, and let this count kill me? I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light. Who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how Don John, your brother, incensed me to slander the lady hero. How you were brought to the, into the orchard and saw me court Margaret in hero's garments. I disgraced me when you should marry her. My villainy they have upon record, which I had rather seal with my death than repeat upon my, over to my shame. The lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation. And briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Not this speech like iron through your blood. I have drunk poison while he utters it. But did my brother set thee on this? Yea, and paid me richly for the practice of it. He is composed and framed of treachery, and fled he is upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now thy image doth appear in rare semblance that I loved it first. Come, bring away the plaintiffs. By this time our sexton hath reformed the nato of the matter. And masters, do not forget to specify when time and place shall serve that I am an ass. Here. Here comes Master Signor Leonardo and the sexton, too. Which is the villain? If you would know your wronger, look on me. Art thou the slave that hath with thy breath killed mine innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so, villain, thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable men, a third is fled, that had a hand in it. I thank you, princes, for my daughter's death. Record it with your high and worthy deeds. "'Twas bravely done, if you bethink you of it. "'I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. "'Choose your revenge yourself. "'Impose me to what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. "'Yet sinned I not, but in mistaking it. "'By my soul, nor I, and yet to satisfy this good old man, "'I would bend under any heavy weight that he'll enjoin me to. Uh, "'I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. "'That were impossible.' But I pray you both, possess the people in Messina here, how innocent she died. Hang her an epitaph upon her tomb, and sing it to her bones. Sing it tonight. Tomorrow morning come you to my house, and since you could not be my son-in-law, be yet my nephew. My brother hath a daughter, almost the copy of my child that's dead, and she alone is heir to both of us. Give her the right you should have given her cousin, so dies my revenge. O oh, noble sir, your overkindness doth wring tears from me. I do embrace your offer and dispose for henceforth of poor Claudio. Yes, okay. Tomorrow, then, I will expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. This naughty man shall face to face he be brought to Margaret, who I believe was packed in all this wrong, hired to it by your brother. No, by my soul she was not, nor knew not what she did when she spoke to me but always hath been and just and virtuous in anything that I do know by her. Moreover, sir, which indeed is not under white and black, the plaintiff here, the offender, did call me an ass. I beseech you, let it be remembered in his punishment. I thank thee for thy care and honest pain. Your worship speaks like a most thankful and reverent youth, and I praise God for you. There's for thy pains. God save the foundation. Go. I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. I leave an errant knave with your worship, which I beseech your worship to correct yourself for the example of others. God restore you to health. I humbly give you a leave to depart, and if a merry meeting may be wished, God prohibit it. Come, neighbor. Mm. Uh, until tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. Farewell, my lords. We look for you tomorrow. We will not fail. Tonight I'll mourn with hero. Uh, uh, yes, gentlemen, bring you these fellows on. We'll talk with Margaret, how her acquaintance grew with this lewd fellow. Pray thee, sweet mistress Margaret, deserve well at my hand by helping me to speech of Beatrice. Will you then write me a sonnet in plays of my beauty? <laughs> in so high a style, Margaret, that no man living shall come over it, for in most com comely true. Thou deservest it. To have no man come over me, why shall I always keep below stairs? 
Thy wit is as quick as a greyhound's mouth it catches. And yours as blunt as the fencer's foils, which hit by hurt you, hurt not. A most manly wit, Margaret. It will not hurt a woman. And so I pray thee, call Beatrice. I give thee the bucklers. Give us the swords. We have bucklers of our own. If you use them, Margaret, you must put in the pikes with a vice, and they are dangerous weapons of poor maids. Well, I will call Beatrice to you, who I think hath legs. And therefore will come. The god of love that sits above and knows me how pitiful I deserve. I mean in poetry, but in loving, Leander the good swimmer, Trollus the first employer of panders, and a whole book full of quantum carpet mongers, whose names yet run smoothly in the even road of a blank verse. Why, they were never so truly turned over and over as my self in love. Mary, I cannot show it in rhyme. I have tried. I can find out no rhyme for lady, but baby. No, I was not born under a rhyming planet, nor can I not woo in festival terms. Sweet Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I called thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay, but till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well now. And ere I go, let me go with that I came, which is, with knowing that hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. Therefore, I will depart unkissed. Thou hast frightened the word out of his right sense. So for forcibly is thy wit. But I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I must shortly hear from him, or I will subscribe him a coward. And I pray thee t now, tell me, for which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? For all of them together, which maintain so politic a state of evil that they will not admit any good part to intermingle with them. But for which of my parts did you first suffer love for me? Suffer love? A good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. In spite of your heart, I think, alas, poor heart, if you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours, for I will never love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably. And now tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill too. Serve God. Love me and mend. And will I leave you too? Comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle. It is proved that my lady hero has been falsely abused. The prince and Claudio mightily abused. And Don John is the author of all who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this news, senor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in those eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncles. Is this the monument of Leonardo? Done to death by slander's tongues was the hero that lies here. Death and garden of her wrongs gives her fame which never dies. So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Hang thou there upon the tomb, praising her when I am dumb. Now music, sound and sing your solemn hymn. Pardon goddess of the night, those that slew thy virgin knight, for which with songs of woe, Round about her tomb they go. Now unto thy bones, good night. Yearly will I do this right. Good morrow, masters. Put your torches out. The wolves have prayed, and look, the gentle day before the heels of Phobius, round about dapples the drowsy east with spots of gray. Thanks to you all, and leave us. Fare you well. Good morrow, masters. Each is several way. Did I not tell you she was innocent? Ugh. So are the prince and Claudio, who accused her upon the air that you heard debated. But Margaret was in some fault for this, although against her will, as it appears, in the true course of all the question. Well, I'm glad that all things sort so well. And so am I, being else in faith enforced to call young Claudio to a reckoning for it. 
Well, daughter, and you gentlewomen all, withdraw into a chamber by yourselves, and when I send for you, come hither masked. The prince and Claudio promise by this hour to visit me. You know your office, brother. You must be father to your brother's daughter and give her to young Claudio. Which I will do with confirmed countenance. Friar, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, senor? To bind me and undo me. One of them. Senor Leonardo, true it is. Good senor, your niece regards me with an eye of favor. Mm, that eye my daughter lent her. Tis most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. Ah, the sight whereof I think you had from me, from Claudio and the prince. <laughs> but what's your will? Your answer, sir, is enigmatical. My will is your goodwill. May stand with ours this day to be conjoined, in state of honorable marriage, in which, good friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help, here comes the prince and Claudio. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Ah, good morrow, prince. Good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry with my brother's daughter? I'll hold my mind where she- Call her for it, brother. Here's the friar ready. Which is the lady I must seize upon? Uh, this same is she, and I do give you her. Why then, she's mine. Sweet. Let me see your face. No, no, no. That you shall not till you take her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand before this holy friar. I am your husband if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. And when you loved, you were my other husband. <gasps> Another hero. <laughs> Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live, and surely I live. I'm a maid. The former hero, hero that is dead. She died, my lord, but whilst her slander lived. All this amazement can I qualify, when after that the holy rites are ended. I'll tell you largely a fair hero's death. Meanwhile, let wonder seem familiar, into the chapel let us presently. Soft and fair friar, which is Beatrice? I answered to that name, what is your will? Do not love me? <laughs> Why no, no more than reason. Why then, your uncle and the prince and Claudio have been deceived? They swore you did. Do you not love me? No more than reason. Why then, my cousin Margaret and Ursula are much deceived, for they swear you did. <laughs> they swore that you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then you do not love me? No, truly, but in friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I am sure you love the gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon it that he loves her, for here's a paper written in his hand, a halting sonnet of his own pure brain, fashioned to Beatrice. And here's another, written in my cousin's hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. A miracle! Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee, but by this light, I take thee for pity. I will not deny you, but by this good day, I will yield upon with great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. Peace, I will stop your mouth. How dost thou, Benedict, the married man? <laughs> I'll tell thee what, Prince, a college of wit crackers cannot flout me out of my humor, for, for man is a giddy thing, and this is my conclusion. For thy part, Claudio, I did think to have beaten thee, but in that thou art, like to be my kinsman, live unbruised, and love my cousin. I had well hoped thou wouldst have denied Beatrice, that I might have cudgelled thee out of thy single life to make thee a double dealer, which out of question thou wilt be, if my cousin do not look exceedingly, exceeding narrowly to thee. Come, come, we are friends. Let's have a dance, ere we are married that we may lighten our heart, own hearts and our wives' heels. We'll have dancing afterward. First of my word, therefore, play music. Prince, thou art said, get thee a wife. Get thee a wife. My lord, your brother John is taken in flight and brought back to, with our men back to Messina. Think not of him till tomorrow. I'll devise thee brave punishment for him. Strike up, pipers!
You're still here? After that act five? It's over. Go home. Shoot. Go. Go. Say go.